Okay. Okay, so recording has started. Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. As a reminder, we honor the Jenkins Contributor Covenant. So we, the fundamental principle is be nice. Uh, specific of exceptions or concerns are handled through the Jenkins Governance Committee. So we, we want to be treat each other well and with respect and dignity. So welcome to office hours. What topics would you like to address? Let me bring up the notes and I can share the notes and then we will talk through and prioritize some topics. So today is, did we miss taking notes last week? We did, shameful. Sorry, everyone. Uh, we usually take notes in addition to a recording. Last week, it appears that I did not take any notes. I just had the recording. So ah. this week, we'll fix that and we'll take notes in addition to the recording. Right, so here are the notes and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. So can everyone see the Jenkins Docs Office Hour page of notes? Yes. All right. Yes. So, and, and I will post the link to this page into the chat so that you can find it and follow along with us if you'd like. All right. Okay. So Jonathan, and be sure that our list of who's attending is up to date. So Stephen Jude. And we've got one other attendee that I'll let make introduction of themselves or oh two. Prakar. Prakar, I don't recall your last name. Can you help me with that? Uh, Prasad Gupta. Gupta. Thank you. Okay, excellent. All right, okay, so um, two weeks ago, we talked about the season of docs site and uh, various pieces of the Google season of docs process. Uh, are there topics that you would like to propose for today? And let's put them here and then we'll prioritize them and decide which ones we approach first. Uh, hello, Mark. Hi, Jonathan, how are you? Hi, hi everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I would like to propose to we speak about uh, the history of the Jenkins I.O. For example, what uh, important things do you consider to pick that technology? It's a, a old one or modern one. Um, I was uh, studying the, the GitHub files and uh, I guess you are using uh, uh, we are using a uh, our awesome website, static website. It's correct. Uh, I believe it's called Awestruck. Yeah, so Awestruck. Awestruck. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. As the page generator. Yeah. 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 So I would like to know more more about the decision. Good, good question. Why you, we are using SDoc and not Markdown as common use. And, uh, and uh, I, I prepare uh, to continue our samples use. We see, uh, we saw in the last video meeting, I prepare some samples too. So after your explanation about the history, I would like to share my screen to show it to you. Okay, all right. So further samples of the, and these were samples of the analysis? Yeah, a sample of a, uh, our, uh, our study about the feedbacks. For example, I, I have an idea about the search field 
and another website generator with uh, some uh, new features that uh, could be useful to us. Oh, good. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Any other topics that others would like to would like to include in the in the discussion? I would like uh, Mark to propose a topic about relationship between Google Season of Docs uh, and uh, Jenkins infrastructure, uh, specifically for technical writers, how to get. Uh, accounts in Jenkins infrastructure, uh, but uh, uh, also I would like to uh, address the issue of getting credentials uh, to host um, uh, Jenkins instance on the cloud. Okay, so in this case, what you're saying is just to be sure I understand this is uh, you need to run run your own run a Jenkins instance. Is this in Kubernetes or in some other location? Uh, well, let's say that uh, right now I have, for instance, Docker instance, which I would like to be hosted on Amazon Cloud. Just simple okay. case. All right. Okay, good question. All right. Are there other topics before we get started on any specific topic? So, Stephen, were there any topics that were of particular importance to you? Yeah, mm, I was. I'm still looking at the at the features we have on uh, uh, the proposed features we have available for students to pick up, and I'm still going through the Jenkins uh, code base to understand a bit of it. I think I joined yesterday, so I'm still not uh, comfortable. I'm still trying to adjust myself a bit. So I, I, I'm ready to go on with anything we are saying. Maybe I can learn better before I start contributing. Okay, very good. Well, so then I'm going to use this as a chance to propose a Google Google Season of Docs timeline reminder. I'd like to be sure we include time for that. July 9 due date. Um, reviews. Still needed, etc. Okay, good. Any others before we start working on those topics? Okay. Then let's go ahead. Let's take them on. First one then was, I'd propose that we just go ahead in the order that the questions were asked. History of the Jenkins IO site. Uh, we'll then give some time to Jonathan to review the feedback analysis site that he's created. And then Vlad will address the relationship between season of docs and Jenkins infrastructure. And we'll close the meeting within an hour with a one minute reminder about timeline. So um, let's take on the history of the Jenkins site first. Uh, so maybe a, a simple, a brief overview of what's, what's behind the Jenkins site. Uh, Jenkins.io is a static website, right? It's, it's weird. Hang on, I have to exit Slack because otherwise we don't really want my Slack messages appearing on everybody's screen. There we go. Okay, excuse the interruption. It's nice of Angel to say thank you, but 
you didn't need to see it. <laughs> All right, so Jenkins.io is a static website. Uh, it is assembled from multiple sources. All right, and so it's, its sources include ASCII doc uh, source files uh, that document Jenkins features, right? It's also assembled from uh, content extracted from Jenkins plugins, like the list of extensions, uh, like pipeline help. It's also generated, it also generates content based on the change logs for LTS releases and weekly releases. And those actually come in as YAML files. Um, and from and those other change data sources. logs, are those both for Jenkins LTS itself and the plugins? Uh, no, they are only for the core releases. So, only for the core releases. Yeah, okay, that's, cool. that's a good clarification for core releases, uh, including LTS and weekly. Um, there are other data sources involved. So it, it includes content, ASCII doc, uh, blog posts, uh, etc. So generating a static site from a mixture of data files and um, source files in markdown languages, etc. Um, at the time they were working through dis the choice process of hey, which tool should we use? Awestruck was a, was a reasonable choice at the time. And so they selected, uh, selected Awestruck as a reasonable site generator at the time. Now, I was not actively involved in the site generation at that time. So I can't give you all the details on the discussions that were, that, that took place to come to the decision. Uh, I can tell you some of the stories around ASCII doc versus Markdown. So, but Austruct was selected. Uh, since then, there have been other site generators that come, have come into existence like Antora um, or others. And those would, would be potentials for a, a consideration. I, I have friends that I consider very, very smart who are deeply, deeply impressed by Antora as an example. So now, Awestruck then chosen as the as the orchestration framework, etc. Why ASCII doc is the markup language rather than Markdown? And the fundamental reason is because Markdown is not a single specification. Uh, Markdown is you choose your variant, and the variant the variants have important differences between them. Uh, and those important variants get in the way of many things. So there's the GitHub variant. Um, so years ago when GitHub was not the sole and dominant provider of, of Git repository hosting, uh, it wasn't clear that GitHub Markdown would be a sort of universal standard. Uh, the other challenge is that Markdown is not especially well suited for generation of books. PDF book style output, whereas ASCII doc actually thinks very hard about how can we could we turn this into a printed volume if we needed to. Uh, Jonathan, does that summary help you at all? Is are there questions you'd like to ask relative to that? Yeah, uh, I I I see the need to ask about the this choice because. I was studying our our strict uh, site website generator, and uh, looks like it's a it a, a, a he is dead a, a dead page. I, I, there is no more movement in the community. Uh, for example, yeah, I will put here in the website uh, in our chat. Uh, just a moment. Where is the chat? 
see is the link to their GitHub. And the first issue you can see uh, in March, uh, of the last year, is the site is dead. So it's complicated to find the new plugins or uh, new instructions to improve our website documentation. Okay. Uh, and uh, but it's possible we work. We we know that uh, just a a question. There is some interest in to migrate the content for a new platform, Mark, or not? Oh, there's so there's interest. It's worth. It's certainly worth considering. Should we switch to a new platform, uh, and that would be a project to propose. It's a, a valid project, and to say, hey, we want to go someplace else. Absolutely. So, is there? Yeah. Interest. Now? I asked that question, uh, thinking about it, this proposal. And and yes with the caveat right with the caveat that with the the warning that it is a large project and okay. and there is probably plenty of programming involved not just writing not so much today okay. is uh, quite simple to do the thing it's almost uh, all right the programming Program it. Okay. Uh, can I, I share my screen? Too? Sure, absolutely. Here, let me let me stop sharing mine, and I have to grant share. So yes, go ahead. Right, just a moment. Are you seeing my screen? We are. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, here we are speaking about the ViewPress site generation sites. So here it's it, it show it to you. You are seeing the ViewPress website. Okay. Okay. So it's a it's a normal website to our to work with uh, documentation. And it uses Markdown, okay? And so at the top, we have the nav bar with a search working. So we can see it's possible to uh, use the search to find any content. So for example, here is, uh, we can, we have the same uh, features about permalinks at, at previous page, next page, and we can see the last update info to our pages and you can to edit on github too okay mm -hmm. um, it's the the most common and uh, useful features to our docs i mean great uh, here we have the tutor guide to jenkins get started so if we are here we can uh, guided tour and just a moment okay we're all, okay and, and see our get started documentations okay so i get the that this content and migrate for a local sample so we work with uh, the, the our data and here you can see uh, for example the uh, sidebar with uh, our page links and it's a uh, the improvements are we have a better structure of about our fonts so it's nicer to read about okay we have links so we can use these tips are uh, here we can see it. Anyways, it's the, almost the same, but uh, the principal feature is about our search bar. So here we can, for example, look for style. Installations, we receive some uh, options about the 
the top and we can use uh, some plugins to map it out too. So for example here, uh, we are working about the pipeline. We can see the samples. So you can step by step, go through step by step. And we can, for example, install plugins to work with uh, tabs in our documentation and put in a horizontal way, not only vertical, to show some some samples for our users, okay? Now speaking about our search, uh, now it's common to use uh, these guys uh, API to to mark our content, web content. It's common, for example, if uh, we are here in the ViewPress website, we can search something. And so it, the search is executed by Algolia website. The Algolia website is a search engine provided by API. Uh, it's free for 50,000 requests. So I don't know uh, uh, how many users uh, visit our page per day or per month, for example. Do you know, Mark, we that had... number? We had 150,000 in the month. Yeah, so we had 100, it was 145,000 in the month of April when Olivier gathered some data for a blog okay. post. Yeah, so, so for example, we can build uh, as a plugin for, well, we struck the platform, we, maybe we need to program a new plugin to improve, to offer a search button for our users. So for, uh, here we we have the price. It's free for fifty thousand requests per month. Okay, a lot of websites use this, but I I, I don't know uh, tell you if it, it's only free or not. Maybe not. I I guess because it's uh, for example, ViewPress is a big website, so maybe they have a paid paid plan. Uh, but in our case, we can, for example, use the default solution that is only work with the uh, topic. So for example, here, I will see my, my Visual Studio. You can see it or not? Can see it, yeah. So it, what I see is named slots and default slot content, right? Yeah, it, uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, it's a H2. Uh, H H HML and H2 tag, H2 and H3. So we can work with search. It's a simple way, search box. Now where is? And here, it's a tip. Uh, the built-in search only works. Uh, it's a free feature, but only maps the H2 and H3 tracks from headers. So we cannot have a so rich research like this one because this research is provided by Algolia, okay? But we have uh, a simple research that gives us text markations in our mark, mark, uh, DAO file or our, for example, I can here, uh, Hello Jenkins. Where is the Jenkins dashboard? So, for example, we have here several sections. So, I put here option, and I can see all them here because it's a top section. Okay, so that's it. It's uh, just to show you a new option to work on documentation uh, and I don't know if it is you to say how we can uh, develop a search plugin to our doc site. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so so ViewPress looks looks interesting. I had seen someone use Algolia with Antora as the site generator. Yeah, um, and I had not seen anyone use ViewPress, but so a proposal to consider switching the site generator 
is certainly a, a viable proposal to say, hey, I think this would be a, a good Google season of docs proposal to, to make the transition from Ostruct to something else. Okay. The, yeah, you, you believe it's aligned with the Google season of docs or no? I, I, think, I think that would be just fine within context of Google season of docs. It could also work well as a separate standalone project. Uh, that it's to, uh, my initial assessment is it's a large enough project that there's a lot of work hiding behind that transition from one site generator to another because yeah. the, the, the code that I believe the customizations we're using for Ostruct are coded in Ruby. So you'd probably have to develop plugins in whatever language is, is mm. used by the new generator. And before, before you can get sign off that, hey, yes, we're going to do that, we would want to be sure that we reviewed with uh, a number of key players to be sure that they, they said, yes, a transition to this other site generator would need to have these capabilities. And they would likely tell us, hey, we've got to, we can't lose change logs. We can't lose pipeline documentation. We can't lose various features of the of the existing site, the blogs, and we I have see. to we have to retain the anchor tags. We have to retain the anchor identifiers and the page locations. So so there are complexities in making that transition that I would expect it to be a a substantial project. Yeah, you are right. So so okay. <laughs> Any other questions on the topic, Jonathan? I'm, I'm delighted. That's, that's a really, really excellent, excellent investigation and a good topic for discussion. Yeah, uh, I just saw some things that I, I learned uh, uh, migrating the, our guides for the, the local sample. What well, I will share my screen again, just a moment. So for example, it's about the complexity of our docs. So here we can see uh, our original uh, get started uh, guide tour. And here I, I teach our users how to use Jinx at the first time, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, are, you are seeing my, my screen? Yes, yes. You are seeing, yeah, okay, so for example, uh, here it's a feedback uh, request from our users to get more images or more samples about the things you are telling to them. So it's a very generic thing just to say, uh, follow the instructions to complete the installation. It's a point to think about. And the next uh, page, we have uh, a, a storytelling here about the pipeline. Here we can see some samples and steps about how to do. And the quick start samples, we give to them uh, uh, some complex samples. So for example, uh, I, I, I like to imagine the first time in contact uh, when I, I write uh, some, about something. So for example, it's the first, first time the users are seeing Jenkins and try it. So in the first sample, we give to them a dependence about Docker. Mm, Docker is a, a, a hype technology. It's a good one. It's amazing. I love it. But for the beginners, it's not so simple to use Docker. In our first sample, we ask them to use it. So it's, a, it's not a good thing. I guess because uh, we put more complexity in the uh, the learning way. So, for example, here at migration, I have a local sample. Let me find them. So, here? no, I get up here. So, for example, I chant that. So this way, uh, just a small page, not so long ones. So you can uh, break it uh, at the middle of our sections, put some screenshots and put more tips. And for example, at beginner, I ask to, so then I put a prerequisite here and I, for example, 
direct our users for another page to learn how to get started with Docker. I not mix the samples all together. I just a, a, a test, a simple test, and like a video game, we increase the complexity uh, in the, the next steps, the next samples, right? So here, for example, in our pipeline, I put what is the pipeline at the same as the original documentation. I put the steps segmented by one by one with sample images and with highlight sections to to user can find where where to click, what to see. And in he, here in our samples, we put the most generic way just for um, offer to users a winner path. So just follow this, get the simple. If you want to make more, uh, for example, uh, you use the simple, you can hello world sample in our pipeline, might not, but uh, we not are showing to users. We prefer, for example, offer more complexity. It's a, just about thinking of how we can improve our writing skills. Just a, to share this. Okay, thing. now, now this, this, all, this example already highlights one of the interesting challenges that that step-by-step -step tutorials confront, particularly in the Jenkins project. So if you'll scroll, that, scroll down just a little bit further, a little bit further still, uh, so almost yeah. right there in the source code, in the, in the source code picture that you've got, okay, that, that is a nice simple pipeline that's saying, report the Java version from any agent. Yeah. Unfortunately, any agent except Windows, because that steps sh is is going to run a shell. It'll run a born shell, or a, but it'll run the shell of the operating system. But on Windows, that has to be bat. So so our users, it's not uncommon for them to say, "Hey, I'm running on Windows. I expect to have a a, a good experience on Windows." So if you were to look at the, at the right below the guided tours, you'll find a different approach on the, on the Jenkins site where it has a series of four or five tutorials that use uh, Docker images as a way to allow you to run the same demonstration on Windows or on Linux. I get so, the point. Uh, but they, uh, it's just because Docker is a, a, another uh, technology uh, technology side by Jenkins. Just for for example, it's maybe it's better uh, as offer to than a Windows by platform, not for only for Docker samples. Mm. It's because we are if we we are offer Docker. We are saying, oh, first to learn about Docker and then go and learn about Jenkins. It's not a prerequisite, no Docker to know Jenkins, I guess. And, and, and it, it is not, that's a good point. And it's, it's not intended to be, so agree wholeheartedly. So your suggestion there was on this next steps, we might put an additional tab, which is Windows. And then in that they would, they would click that when they click the windows tab it would say steps bat and echo so hello I, world yeah just for not that uh, be, uh, become the first experience more frustrating mm -hmm. good suggestion i like that yeah. okay i'm stopping the share all right so anything else with regard to to site generation tools and the history of the site. Okay, then I propose let's take the next topic, Jonathan, and that's your topic again. You were going to show us something on the feedback analysis site. Uh, you're muted, Jonathan. Sorry. <laughs> I already show it. Uh, it was the website sample. 
Oh, oh, I see. Sunday. Okay, I okay. was assuming you were going to show us the the something from the feedback analysis you had done last week. My mistake. Great. No, okay. No. okay, then we're set with that topic. That's excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, alternative site generator. Okay, then let's take on our next topic. So. Let's go to one more. I'm going to share my screen and let's talk through the topic that Vlad had asked about. So what's the relationship between Google Season of Docs and the Jenkins infrastructure? So Vlad, you asked, uh, one of the questions was how to get accounts in the Jenkins infra? Uh, well, uh, there is a wonderful documentation on Jenkins.io related to uh, Jenkins infrastructure and it tells how to get accounts, but it doesn't help uh, to get credentials to host Jenkins instance on the cloud. So, um, Right, and, and in fact, the Jenkins project Jenkins project right now does not have um, separate instances for developers or writers in the cloud. Hmm. So that's, that's, it's a good point. It, it, it doesn't exist right now. What we're doing right now is uh, developers and writers are relying on their employers. I see. That doesn't mean it's the right thing to do, but that's what it, what that is the current situation on their employer accounts to uh, provide or or their own or or their own computers, right? That's the other their own computers or their employer accounts to provide. Um, infrastructure. Now we've got a good example of a case where that's not the case that we may be able to use as a model. The Jenkins X um, Google Season of Co of uh, Google Summer of Code student uh, has been allocated an account um, for Kubernetes work um, somehow. Uh, and uh, we could just give me the action item mark wait to check with Cara de la Mark uh, to see how she did it. Because that, that there must be a way, she found a way to do it, and we probably need to make it systematic so that we can, as, it, as someone is assigned a project or takes on a project, particularly if it's under Google Summer of Code or Google season of docs uh, that we have infrastructure available to them. Um, can we add one item or sub item to this, sure. uh, uh, Mark? Uh, in case if we will follow uh, this, uh, uh, we'll follow current LR Mark, should we use Jenkins X uh, as a native uh, uh, um, implementation of Kubernetes, uh, of Jenkins in Kubernetes, or we can follow alternative ways? I no, know. yeah, we, the, the, I, only, I only reference Jenkins X because it means I know somebody who's figured out a way to solve this class of problem. We, we wouldn't use Jenkins X in any way in this case. Jenkins X and Jenkins are, are well, mm -hmm. the simple parallel is they are roughly as related to one another as JavaScript is related to Java. Mm -hmm. Right. They share right. the same first four letters, but that's pretty much it. Jenkins right. X is implemented in Go. Jenkins is implemented in Java. Jenkins X has a very different target. Jenkins X is Kubernetes all the time. Jenkins will go anywhere and run anything. And, mm -hmm. and they have two very different products. Thank you very much, Mark, for answering this question. Yeah, so, but, but the use, and maybe what I should say differently is a GSOC student, this way I wouldn't have confused things, right? If I just said a GSOC student, because you don't care what project they're on. And, and I will check, let me take the action item here. I'll put myself an action item.
Got it. And it's it's a very real question because we can't we can't reasonably expect that someone coming to contribute to Google Season of Docs, if they were to choose and propose a great project proposal on Kubernetes, it would be absolutely unreasonable for us to say, oh, and you need to, by the way, provide your own Kubernetes cluster. That just doesn't feel fair, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's look, part of, the, part of the project should be providing the infrastructure if needed to support your work on the project. Mm -hmm. Now, you had also asked about how to get accounts in Jenkins Infra. Was this specific to the equipment or something, something different? Well, uh, uh, this was in relation to the next question because there is documentation already on Jenkins.io how to get accounts in Jenkins Infra, but I was not sure how it may help answering the next question, how oh. to get credentials. Okay, yeah, all right. So, and so they are, they are an account in Jenkins Infra, you, it's usually, used for people who will maintain Jenkins Infra. Hmm. And if your intention is not to maintain Jenkins infrastructure, then then all you would do is use your, you know, in any case, you use your, your JIRA account slash Jenkins account as provided by accounts.jenkins.io. Hmm. So that part is pretty easy. Uh, I assume that everyone on this call already has an account on accounts.jenkins.io. If not, you just need to register there. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, infra maintainers are added to specific groups mm -hmm. that grant ex additional permission. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anyone on this call needs to be an infra maintainer unless you're feeling like, oh, I want to also be involved in taking care of ci.jenkins.io or watching over our Kubernetes cluster or those kind of things. That's a separate process outside of Google Season of Docs. Mm -hmm. Now, one idea, if, if what you needed was a Jenkins instance on the cloud and all you need is a small place to run a current image, um, I might be able to persuade Meg, who's with us, to see if we could get a training instance instance from uh, CloudBees. Ah. It's one of the things is that CloudBees, as a company, provides training to its customers. And sometimes they've been willing to lend us, lend the community or one or two users access to a training instance that they could then use to work through course materials. However, the problem with the training instances is they are locked to a specific version uh, and they are of Jenkins and they are locked, they are limited in terms of um, in your access to them. Right, meaning you may not be able to log into the shell, you may not be able to do all sorts of things that an administrator of a, of a genuine Jenkins server may have to do. So Meg, what do you think? Is that and based on what you know about your experience with the training instances, if, if a writer said, hey, I need to do some writing about Jenkins, for me, I would almost recommend run Jenkins locally on your own computer as the first choice. I'm thinking that too. Okay. I mean, because a lot of, well, in general, I get nervous about anything that has to do with installation or configuration or right. generating agents as being the sorts of things that can really break and break. Oh, a right, right. Instance. No, no way to add new agents. That's a good point. The agent configuration is locked. I'm even thinking, Mark, what if you were playing with, say, configuration as code? Uh, Would you yeah. like to try to reconfigure the one of these instances? I'm thinking that might blow up in your face real fast. Yeah, because that really needs shell access. So uh -huh. Well, we do have DevBox in some of them, but... 
Yeah, but very much different than the experience of using a using a system where you've actually got access to the root shell, not just to a Docker image shell. Right. That's sort of my thought. Um, what I'm thinking is, if it was somebody who was working on some really simple subject, it would probably work. Right. But then again, but almost anything interesting that I can think of to do, it could blow up real fast. Right. Okay. All right. So um, forgive, forgive my side trip on that question. I think the answer there is this would probably for the purposes that the people who are here not be workable, right. unlikely to be workable. Yeah. And I mean, for Jenkins, that it shouldn't be that hard to spin up their own Jenkins instance. Right. That it might be easier, in fact, than dealing with the lab and, and be more powerful and safer. Uh, let's put that work along. It's right here. All right. Nice idea for me, but no, it's not likely to work. Oh. Okay. All right. So we've still got the question and how do how would we get the credentials slash access slash permissions to host Jenkins on the cloud. And I don't you know, I don't know, Vlad, I'll have to bring that back to next week's meeting. It's a very good meeting. Thank good, you. A very good topic for the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah, and my assumption it may be uh, valuable for uh, people, even for people who are writing documentation, for technical writers, and especially for new contributors right. who are interested in exploring more about infrastructure. Now, I guess there there is there is a possible if you haven't already used uh, promotional credits from one of the one or more of the the vendors that are out there, but promotional credits are sometimes available. Uh, from cloud vendors. Uh, so for example, uh, AWS, Google, Microsoft, I know they all have promotional programs, but if you're like me, I used up my promotional dollars long ago. Right. And if they're not allowing to reuse basically. Right, right. What this is a one-time deal, right? You get to use it once. And if you've already used them, you, they, you can't go back and say, but I want to try again. <laughs> they, they won't allow that. Right. What, is it keyed on your email address? It is. It's keyed on your credentials and therefore, right. which are tied to your email. So, so, so you I, can just keep creating new email accounts, right? I, I suspect they may also demand something like a credit card number for purposes of authentication not for charging and uh -huh. as soon as you start using the same credit card number over and over again from a, a different account they will i suspect reject you i, I haven't tried that mm -hmm. i've not not gone that it far is, but I, mean, I assume ethically it bothers me a little bit because it is supposed to be just a one-time thing to play with right and... right so uh, yeah i'm sure there is some some way around this but it is very close to cheating so <laughs> yeah and and we do not want to encourage anyone to cheat in any way that's that's actually quite the opposite we are very grateful to aws as an example because they have provided a significant donation to the jenkins project to allow us to use infrastructure from them no way would we ever suggest anyone cheat any of these cloud vendors yeah. all right okay uh, we're, we've got about 10 minutes left. Any other questions before my concluding comments on the Google Season of Docs timeline? Um, oh, maybe somebody else who, who wants to ask, but I have just one question. Okay. All right. Well, so by way of reminder, Google Season of Docs is we're in the we're in the prepare your application phase now let's see the specific title proposal phase right now and that's your opportunity as candidates to prepare and discuss we have several several ideas already proposed and we encourage all of you any of you to propose further ideas 
I apologize, I have not yet reviewed the pending, pending proposals. I will do that this week so that we've got questions will be open next Monday. Um, and then again, the following Monday, still prior to the July 9th final date, when those proposals must be submitted to Google. So don't forget July 9th. It would be sad to have spent a lot of work to prepare a proposal and then miss the due date. They, as far as I understand, they do not offer any leniency on when those proposals must be in. If you don't get them in by July 9th, you don't get them in. You'll have to wait for another year. It is midnight July 9th in what time zone? I do not know. You'll have to read the, the Season of Docs site. I, I haven't looked to that level, Meg. Okay. My, my answer was it's July 8th. Right. In whatever time zone you're in, it's July 8th. If you don't have it in by July 8th, you should consider yourself in serious jeopardy. All right. Okay, Mark. So just for confirm, and the next Monday, uh, you will send to us some corrections or some information about our proposal proposals. Right. Uh, so the right. Right. So during this week, I will review proposals that are already online. I will make comments on the on the the Google Docs so that you'll have the comments there. We intentionally want those docs to be public so that everybody can see and learn together. And and then we can discuss them further next week. If you want to ask questions about feedback, you can also ask questions right inside the doc. You don't have to wait until this meeting. If, if I say something and you say, I don't understand what you said, Mark, in reviewing my document, um, that's perfectly fine. Ask right there. Okay. So to our next meeting, uh, for example, if you need some clarifications about the, some talks, talks about our proposal, you are asking to us at the meeting or you use the docs? I'll use the docs. If I if if there is something that needs clarification in one of your proposals, I will ask right inside that document. That way yeah. I'm not delaying you making you wait for this meeting or anything like that. We like we like very much to use Google Docs as a way to allow us to do reviews, ask each other questions, improve things, make them better. No, okay. Make them better. Great. Anything else before we conclude the session? Mm -mm. I have a question for you when we're done here offline, but. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks very much, everyone. Let's see, stop Thank the you. recording.